So that's, in essence, this is how these, these models are trained, right? Um, and I do encourage you people to find time to look at uh, the, the really good stuff that a lot of people are using, a lot of programmers are using, like so-called Git Pilot, right? So if you go to that URL, you'll be able to find the details about how you can, you can install Git Pilot and, and perhaps try and poke around and see how Git Pilot can help you automatically generate code, right? Um, Open, open AI is, uh, is also seriously look, working on, on this product offering of theirs called Codex, right? Similar to Git Pilot. Um, um, and then I just discovered, actually, when I was preparing these slides, I was not aware that, uh, that uh, 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 Amazon as well was working on so-called Code Whisperer. I haven't really played around with Code, code Whisperer. I have played around with uh, Git Copilot, for instance, right? Um, so, so here's just some random example of how you'd use something like this, right? Imagine, same example I've been giving, right? Imagine you have this problem, you're presented with this problem where you're asked to say, develop some, this could be Java, this could be JavaScript, but develop a Python-based application that requires you to, a Python script really, that requires you to read the posts from the Lusaka Times API. Now, if you're a programmer, right, you agree with me, and you've already started doing this when you are working on your assignments, you agree with me that the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to go online here and start searching. If you don't know, how do I extract posts using WordPress API, right? And then you start clicking on, on links. Eventually, you'll probably find yourself on Stack Overflow or something. And then Stack Overflow will have a whole range of questions that are associated with, with uh, the information you're looking for, right? Um, but the idea is, the idea behind this scenario is this process you're going through is um, counterproductive, right? You end up wasting a lot of time. I don't know how many of you have found yourselves looking for like a solution and you spend hours, right? Just clicking, you know, going to page number two of Google, right? Trying to find a solution and you can't find the solution. Um, but it turns out that you can take advantage of these so-called AI powered code generators. Like I've, I've given you a ton of examples with ChatGPT. So in ChatGPT, I don't know if you can see here, but in ChatGPT, um, what I did in this particular example myself is I just said, I asked uh, ChatGPT a very simple thing, right? I sat there, right? And I asked a very simple question, similar to this same scenario, right? Write a Python script that's going to extract the most recent 100 posts from the WordPress API of Saga Times. And, and what this AI powered code generator, although I mean, this is like a generic generative model here, uh, but because this, this, mo this application here, of the model, which is uh, GPT-3, I don't know if they've improved it, is, is really, uh, it was, it's pre-trained on, on public data as well on the internet, uh, which explains why you can actually generate code using chat GPT. It's not specific to code, they say, you can actually um, issue so many different things within chat GPT. But there we go. So what this thing is doing is it just, it generates code for me. And what I did actually when I did this, I was doing this today, is I just copied the code and just, pasted it in, in Python and boom, right? I'm able to extract all the 100 posts uh, from Osaka Times. I mean, granted, this is a very, um, I think this is a very, sorry? For assignments? Yeah, it, it is, but you will fail in the exam. That's the thing, unfortunately. If you, uh, and this is, um, by the way, there, there are a lot of conversations going around about how education is going to be radically changed by this sort of uh, AI tools. In fact, um, yeah, there are a lot of conversations about what exactly people are doing in this space, right? Uh, are we getting too far ahead of ourselves? If we are, if you are designing software that is able to really think in more or less, not really think, but behave in more or less the same way that a human being can think, uh, like when you, you're interacting with this, you actually have a conversation with this, right? It's a conversational bot. So if you're designing software like that, I mean, the questions that people uh, into this ethical AI space asking is, I mean, are we really, do we know what we are doing, right? Or are we just rushing to do these things? Because these things are getting better and better, right? Like there's talk of them having, is it uh, deployed GPT-4, for instance, but they haven't yet integrated it with the publicly available version of ChatGPT, right? But anyway, that's besides the point. So there we go, right? Reuse, this is an example of reuse. Don't forget we're talking about reuse here, right? A different type of reuse here, right? Um, so, but I can also take advantage of different sort of tools, right? So this, this, this application, 
called uh, GitHub Copilot is marketed as uh, an AI pair programmer. I don't know if you were introduced to pair programming uh, in 2010. So uh, in as much as programming is an individual task, but there are certain instances where you'd be programming with another individual, right? So you, you, you're pair programming. Typically, you'd be pair programming with uh, somebody who uh, is well-versed, right? Somebody who has experience and is a learning process, like you're being mentored or something. So the idea behind Git Copilot is you have this AI assistant which acts as, um, as, as your, your mentor or something, right? So I, I did a similar, I issued a similar query. So I installed uh, GitHub Copilot. Well, I really installed GitHub Copilot here. It's not how it works, right? This is a model. So what I did was, um, I, this is, I don't know if you were introduced to this ID in 2010, but uh, this is Visual Studio Code. So within Visual Studio Code, I can install um, a plugin called GitHub Copilot. And by the way, you can tell how popular this is. There's probably four, almost five million programmers that are using this, or that have downloaded this, right? This is how important this space has become. But anyway, um, so I, I, I installed the GitHub Copilot plugin, and the plugin is the one that helps with this, right? So what do I do? Well, this is just a comment, right? I create a comment, and in the comment, I just say, write a Python script that extracts the most recent 100 posts. And then, boom. And now, of course, I mean, I, I did not, uh, I didn't run this. I don't know if it works, but it should be able to work, right? This makes sense here. But it's a starting point. The key thing here is a starting point. The idea behind reuse is what? You're trying to be effective at what you're doing, right? You don't want to waste time. One of the reasons why you might want to go out there and download an already existing system instead of building one yourself, is you want to quickly deliver the product, right? You want to be efficient and effective at what you're doing. You understand? So it's quite interesting. Now, I mean, I do encourage you to look into this, uh, and I think maybe I, I can also showcase uh, something else that, it's not just a comment, right? Um, of course, this only works on compatible IDEs, so it turns out that Visual Studio Code is perhaps one of the most widely used IDEs or something. I don't know if you discussed IDE wars in your, 20, in, in your 10, 2010, right? Oh, which one is the best IDE? No, it's Dr. Java. Okay, that's fine. Uh, well, I'm using Visual Studio Code, right? Good luck with Dr. Java here. But uh, I don't know if Dr. Java is on the list of compatible code. I don't think it is. But, but I can showcase an example, maybe, or for example here, but I can, again, I like using Python myself. So I'll open a new editor, right? I mean, sorry, a new editor here. But I'll open a new file, right? Um, and then I'll just say this is uh, going to be, again, I prefer Python here. I'm going to say 2030 again, but uh, uh, in class, example, something, right? And then the moment I give it an extension, um, because, because I've, I've already... I've already installed, the way this works is, I've already installed a Python uh, plugin for this IDE. Right? So this IDE is generic. I can use it to write you know, Java code, JavaScript, Python. But because I've created a Python IDE, this thing will be able to hopefully recognize a number of things here. So for instance, I could, doesn't have to be a comment. I could say, uh, in, in Python, I want to create a function that define add numbers, right? And hopefully, I don't know if this thing is really going to be add list of numbers. Maybe this thing is not going to work or something. Um, not working. Right. Ah, maybe it's, it's probably not. Am I offline? I'm probably offline here. Yep. So the reason why nothing is happening, if you notice, because the, the way this works is if, if we're saying it's making reference to a model, um, I guess I should connect here. If it's making reference to a model, that model has to be somewhere online out there, right? You understand? So if you notice here, I don't know if you can see here, copyright error, right? It has to connect to some online resource or something, which is quite unfortunate. I would have really loved for you guys to see this. I do encourage you to find time and look at this, though. Um, quite nice. Uh, yeah, I don't know about, about that here. It's still not working. Um, so we should see, but it's quite nice. Anyway, bottom line though is, um, the bottom line is uh, a, classic, a classic way of taking advantage of reuse. 